Last time on Astor Alaska, our combi adventure mobile had failed us, leaving us stranded in Haines, Alaska. We needed to escape from the northern winter and go in search of a solution for our troublesome combi, so we hitched a ride aboard the Commodore Murray as two first-time crew members as we helped Captain Jordan sail south. In our first two weeks of sailing, we learned about the fun and challenges that you face living on the water and got to explore parts of Alaska that we never thought we'd see. This time is about making mistakes and surprises as we push on through the inside passage towards Canada. We pick up the story just north of the Alaskan town of Ketchikan. Just taking the wheel for the first time, I can hardly see. Had to dodge a little tiny skiff and a plane. Alaska. So the way in to Ketchikan the approach to the harbour to Ketchikan is basically in an airfield. This is also a runway. So as well as dodging boats, you have to dodge planes. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is the point that we had to say goodbye to our captain for the next two weeks, as Jordan had to return to his tugboat job in Anchorage. So Leah and I had been charged with looking after the Commodore Murray. Our captain Jordan uh, has left to go to work for two weeks, so he's left us in Ketchikan, which is Alaska's fourth largest city. Not a bad place to wake up at all. Just cooking a little bit of breakfast. What have we got going on here, Leah? Bacon and eggs. What a treat. Bacon and eggs. And look at this in a full stand up size kitchen. Oh man, this is awesome. Hot water. Hot yeah. water on tap. Hot water on tap. This place is awesome. So nice to have some space. So good to be able to cook standing up, not hunched over in a little stove in the combi. I do miss the combi, but I love the boat. I'm a bit biased now. Let's go exploring. Ketchikan is a really interesting place. Self-proclaimed salmon capital of the world, Ketchikan receives an average of 12.5 feet of rain a year. The town's history is in canning and logging and still makes up a large part of the town's economy. However, what we witnessed was that tourism had the biggest impact on the town's streets during summer months. Each morning the cruise ships arrive, dwarfing the local fishing boats and collectively delivering up to 9,000 tourists for the day. This effectively doubles the population of Ketchikan for a few hours each day.
There are opportunities to escape the tourists though, with plenty of wilderness to explore. After two weeks at sea, we were all thankful for the opportunity to stretch our legs. High above Ketchikan, we came across a couple of locals returning from a successful hunt. We were fogged in on Friday night, for all, all day Friday. And then Saturday we got up early, hiked out. I spotted this one at well, I spotted him at probably noon, but it took us for another four hours to get to him, and I shot him about five o'clock, and got back to camp at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Subsistence hunting sure seems like a lot of work, and work was on our agenda too. Captain Jordan had given us a long list of jobs to attend to in his absence. Under something with your hands dirty, Ben. Even we don't have the combi. And my butt crack out. <laughs> it's just how I roll. This is not oily. I'm gonna climb up the mast to install this new foghorn. Um, I'm wearing the weirdest harness that I've ever seen in my life. It's like one piece of material that wraps around you like a sarong. And um, trusting knots that I learned how to tie about two weeks ago. So not exactly filled with confidence, but off we go. I'm hanging up here, hanging for dear life, trying to <laughs> trying to work. It's pretty difficult, I tell you. Bye bye, catch you can. After two weeks in port, we are leaving. We are headed towards Canada. We have about 125 hours of running to get down there. One stop for fuel before we leave. Just to top off the fuel tanks. Fueling up, gotta get us through Canada. We have full water tanks. This will be our longest stretch at sea. I'm excited to get moving. Ketchikan's been amazing. It's been a great little place to chill out for two weeks on the boat, get some work done. Uh, but it is time to get moving and get exploring. I'm excited to see what the uh, remote coast of Canada has in store for us. Such perfect conditions to leave this morning. Where are you taking us, Leah? Canada! Yay! Canada! So we're officially out of the States before our visas expire, which is nice. <laughs> Finally getting used to boat life. He's kind of excited to be on the move as well. Warm traveller this one. Let's go travel in the world, Alaska. Let's go travel in the world. You'll be the most famous traveling dog in the world. <laughs> said she's not in it for the fame and glory, just the experience. Oh, you really are my dog. As we left the clouds of Ketchikan in our wake, we headed further into the inside passage and towards Canada. We had the opportunity to get out the jib and I had the opportunity to make my first potentially serious mistake. Your line? I do. Okay, go on, try it and put it back 
the other side. In my haste, I'd run the jib sheet the wrong side of the lifeline. Now, I had to fix it, meaning I would be holding the full force of the jib in my hand whilst I retied a knot on the correct side. I'd only just learnt this knot and believe me, this wasn't an easy task. Eventually I managed to get the bowline knot tied and the jib secured correctly, but it was a sketchy few moments. Might have made a few little mistakes there. But you know, Captain Jordan's been pretty good, he doesn't bollock me, he just uh, tells me to go and sort it out. So. Sailing has taken my first blood. Kind of difficult holding on to that line there. You know, once I'd messed up and tied the line on the wrong side of the, the railing, um, I had to go out and untie it. And then at one point I was just holding the whole jib in my hands with all the wind. And that's not too bad today. We've got like 10, 15 mile an hour winds, but you know, you don't want to be making those kind of mistakes in the storm. Rip you into the ocean. Goodbye. Lucky I'm learning these with a good captain, good patient captain who knows a lot. And in very nice, calm Alaskan waters. So guys, we're in Granville Channel right now, just chilling out on the bow. It's about to get really beautiful. We're heading into a, like a real narrow channel. Uh, we've just come into Canada, this is the first waters of Canada heading south. And we're headed to some beautiful hot springs. Lee is driving as you can see, doing a really good job, eating a Dorito sandwich. This boat is full of salmon and all sorts of tasty food and she has a Dorito sandwich. To be fair, I kind of had enough of salmon by this point. Oh. Our first night in Canadian waters was one that we would never forget. Good morning from this beautiful location. Bit of a troublesome night last night. We just woke up to Jordan scuffing around with the anchor and found out that we're in like four feet from the um, bottom and we've been dragging towards the shore. We're about maybe a couple of feet from the beach. Ooh. Yeah, not good. But we didn't crash. Lucky. Um. See this, this waterfall and river coming out here? It's got a pretty strong current which we were in. It was pinning us back down this kind of um, this bay here. But as the tide dropped and the wind picked up, we ended up being just over there, which is really close to the rocks. Um, the gear was actually touching bottom for a while and we were pinned at low tide on a very nice bottom. Um, a very nice bottom. It was gravel and uh, wasn't too bad, but could have been much worse if it had been rocks or if it hadn't been as beautifully calm as it is now. But yeah, a bit of a all hands on deck situation last night. It's kind of scary. This thing. It's like it's like when you put an anchor, it's like parking at night on a hill in a Volkswagen. You just never know if you're going to be there in the morning. Still to come on this ad hoc sailing adventure, we explore remote Canada, including places you'd find rather challenging to get to. We discover an old abandoned cannery, tackle the craziest stretch of water we've ever seen, and attempt a multi-day sprint facing open water and the Pacific Ocean. But for that, you'll have to wait until next time. <laughs>